All right. I think we're live. So thank you, Brenda, for getting that going. Hey, welcome everybody to the June edition of CRUG. Uh, good afternoon, uh, wherever you might be, since we're online. It is uh, my pleasure to have you with us. My name is David DeYarsa, current uh, president of the board of CRUG. And uh, I will be very brief today. I would like to uh, just get through a couple of things and get the uh, presentation going. Uh, quick agenda uh, today, just would like to say a big, big thank you to Microsoft Resources, uh, good friends of CRUG for quite some time now. They are hosting and presenting today, and we're going to see a presentation on uh, uh, real-time rendering and VR um, using Revit and Enscape, good workflows to get your uh, visualization in real time. And um, I was just before kicking off the uh, webinar, I was uh, just having a conversation with uh, Daniel uh, um, about uh, the surprising uses that uh, I am finding with my own team in a large construction project for Enscape, uh, which we're not users of, we're just consumers of what the architects are providing us. Um, and um, it just really, really good understanding through VR of the project and some of the constructability issues that, that we have. So it's a great tool. I'm really looking forward to this presentation. Um, so uh, Real quick, just want to give a really big shout out to Microsoft Resources and Topcon Solutions, our current uh, sponsors for, for the year. Uh, they've been both companies have been with us for a long time, but we'll focus on Microsoft today, of course. Um, and also a big thank you to all the rest of the CRUG board members. Uh, you know, you guys helped me put together this content and kind of curate it and, uh, and get, keep this uh, group going. As you all know, it's been a little bit challenging over the last couple of years with COVID and everything else, but we, we persevere. So uh, onwards and thank you very much. Uh, as always, a quick plug for a YouTube channel. We'll be putting up this content as well as every meeting that doesn't have some kind of technical issue and the recording doesn't happen, which sometimes it does occur. Uh, you can find this content on, on CRUG and we're uh, hoping to do a little bit more content creation posting up there. So it's a pretty good channel. It gives us a little bit higher um, reach. And as always, Hit the subscribe button if you if you like what you see in there. It kind of helps us with metrics. And the more subscribers we have, the more it gets out there. So we're hoping to expand this a little bit. Uh, quick plug in here for my own employer. Um, we do these every once in a while. Haven't done one in a while, but we do have an uh, employment opportunity in the Seattle area. Selen, who I work for, uh, is looking to grow our VDC uh, group. Selen's a great company, probably one of the top builders uh, in Seattle, um, in the region, working on some really great, interesting projects. If you want to come work with me, doing some really interesting project, um, we've got a lot of people have come from the design side. If you know Revit inside and out, can have uh, you know a really great place for you at Salon. So I didn't put any contact information here. Just reach out directly to me. I can get you hooked up if you're interested in taking a look at this. Uh, be a really great, um, uh, really great uh, opportunity for somebody. We'd be excited to have you. And uh, with that, uh, let's see, that might have been a record. Hopefully, I'm going to uh, hand it over to Sophia Jaramillo of Microsoft Resources. She's going to introduce uh, Microsoft Resources and the topic for today. And I'm going to turn my camera off, my microphone off, and turn it over. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. And hello, everyone. Uh, special thanks to David for having us join you uh, today for uh, the Seattle Revit User Group presentation. This is Sophia Jaramillo, uh, Account Executive for Enscape at Microsoft Resources. And today we'll be presenting uh, how to generate real-time renderings and VR using Revit and Enscape. We are joined today by my colleagues uh, from the marketing team, Annalisa Montenegro and Brenda Araujo. Welcome, Annalisa. Hi, Brenda. Uh, the presentation today is done by David Spurgel, our visualization application specialist, who's an expert on Enscape and Rhino, and he will be the one presenting today's material. Hi, David. My colleague, Joseph Prune, as well, will be answering your questions online. He's an architect and our Revit and Rhino expert as well. Welcome, Joseph. And we're also joined by Dan Monogam, who is the business leader from Enscape. Dan. You can see we have a full house today to answer all the questions that you might that you may have. So this is the agenda for today's presentation. I'll do a quick introduction of us and the suite of software applications that we offer, training and various technologies resources, including the latest news and resources for Enscape. So today, David will show how virtual reality is changing the way architects and designers 
collaborate and communicate their designs internally with project teams and externally with clients and stakeholders. You'll go over the features and some of the helpful tools that you get in Enscape 3.3 latest version, review the features and enhancement, and we'll jump in in a demo. Uh, so we are recording uh, today's presentation. As David said, if you wanna watch the presentation again, uh, just go to the YouTube channel or reach out to David directly. And if you have any questions about anything that we covered today, please type them in the questions panel. We will answer your questions when David is done with the presentation. So for those who are unfamiliar with us, in addition to our partnership with Enscape, we have curated this suite of software applications <laughs> and work with the best of design and construction technologies. Uh, so we are also a Chaos partner offering V-Ray software as well as Matt Neal, a partner uh, offering our Rhino software as well. Uh, we're also our premier Autodesk partner for more than uh, 30 years. And we have also partnered with Bluebeam for your document management. So if you have any questions about any of these solutions, please reach out to us at info at microsoftresources.com. In addition to our free webinars, we believe that companies also need a deep dive in training. Uh, whether you want to increase your productivity or optimize your company-wide training, we can help you and your team bridge the skills and knowledge gaps, or we can help you close the skills gaps for your new hires and assist you in professional development. We offer live and in-person training. So for our Autodesk on-demand training, uh, we partner with Cat Learning and provide um, that provides online access to thousands of video lessons for more than 40 um, Autodesk products including Autodesk, AutoCAD, and Revit. Uh, we also offer custom classes. If you want uh, you know, your own company class, incorporating your models, data sets, processes, and workflows, we offer that as well. And we also offer Enscape training. So if you have any questions about this training programs that we have, you can email training at microsoftresources.com. We also have different resources for Enscape on our side, uh, including uh, getting started with your Enscape software, material and asset library for Enscape software, virtual reality headset for Enscape software, system requirements for Enscape software, and what's new with uh, the latest version of Enscape, which is 3.3. So all of those resources, you can find them in our uh, resources page on our website. So for those who haven't heard the news yet, we're excited to announce that both our partners, Enscape and Chaos, have merged into one company to create a comprehensive end-to-end -end visualization ecosystem for architects, designers, and artists. This merger allows the company to develop and strand its product portfolio to create a comprehensive end-to-end -end visualization ecosystem. As, part, as partners for both Enscape and Chaos, we will continue to let you know what's evolving and what's changing with this merger. If you're interested in a 14 day trial for Enscape, you can download it from the link that we're gonna post it in the chat box, or you can reach out to us at info at microsoftresources.com. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, today's presenter again, David Spurgel. David is an application specialist at Microsoft Resources. He is responsible for providing training, service, and support for our design and construction clients for various software applications, including Enscape, Chaos V-Ray, McNeil Rhino, Bluebeam Review, and he also happens to be a 3D printing specialist. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Manufacturing Engineering from Boston uh, University. He's also a Bluebeam Customer uh, Success Representative and a Bluebeam Certified Instructor. And we're also joined by Daniel Monaghan. He is the business leader for Enscape in the Americas, where he oversees the US support and channel team. Uh, before Enscape, Daniel worked at Bentley Systems in the company's building performance group and was the VP of marketing for VectorWorks. So David, Dan, thank you for being with us today and all yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Sophia. Um, I'm very excited to be here today and, and I really appreciate this opportunity for us to present Enscape. Um, to kind of kick, thing off, kick things off, I just wanted to do kind of a quick intro um, to kind of set the position of Enscape. As Sophia said, we've kind of merged with Chaos. If you don't know Chaos, Chaos makes a program called V-Ray, 
which is one of the leading uh, photorealistic rendering programs in the market space today. So with Enscape on one end, with photo, with real-time rendering and, and V-Ray in on the opposite end and in kind of the, the photorealistic realm, we're really trying to connect that whole ArcViz workflow from real-time to photorealistic rendering. Today, I'm really going to concentrate on, on Enscape, and Dave and I will be sharing with you some of the new features in 3.3 and some tips and tricks that you can use in your own workflow. To kind of kick things off, um, I like to start with this slide. Um, you know, it's called real-time rendering. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, the, this is what people think about, right? Um, typically it's images like these that come to mind. However, um, as David, even in, uh, in the introduction said, for, for him, you know, when he started to experience Enscape, it, it was less about the real-time rendering and really more about the workflow. And I think that that's a really important consideration when thinking about Enscape is that subtly and maybe even more importantly is how real-time 3D is improving today's design process, not just the output. So traditionally 3D visualization, it's, it's really been isolated or disconnected from the design process. Um, if you look at the traditional viz process in most firms, what we do is we stop design in order to visualize, or in some firms, the design forks and the design is sent to a special viz team or it's even subbed out completely um, while, while the design continues. And, and as you can imagine, you know, this process is, is a little difficult. It's a little inefficient. Merging, um, merging these models, you know, is 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 time consuming. Um, you know, we we create these models. Um, they were creating them for different purposes, and because they were created for different purposes, um, they were created to answer different purposes. And when we create this split we're starting to make decisions in isolation. Um, the models are not informed by what's happening in the parallel model. And there's a real cost to this workflow, um, not only in, in terms of time lost um, and having to manually coordinate this data, but also the costs that happen when there are coordination issues um, and errors or when information is missing. And of course, this cost may be okay if we did this justification once, but as we all know design is iterative. So this coordination happens frequently. Um, in the design process. So what we're doing with Enscape is, is, is really very unique. If, if, if you go to the next slide, Annalisa, um, with Enscape, Viz isn't something that we're doing separately, right? It's something that we're now able to integrate into the design process. And with Enscape, we're seamlessly integrating really high quality visualization and rendering into the Revit interface and then into your BIM workflow. And what's really great about this is that if you know how to add a light or a material in Revit, fundamentally, you already know how to use Enscape. The results are just much faster and much easier uh, to use. So with Enscape, the huge advantage is because it's real time, you can visualize as you design. So as you design in Revit, you can visualize your changes as they're happening. You know, you can, you can instantly see the impact your design decisions have on a building's architecture and construction. You can quickly validate your design ideas and, and get to decision points faster. And because we can do this in real time, you can immerse your clients and your stakeholders into your design, you know, allowing you to better communicate your design intent. And that's the real advantage of, of Enscape is the fact that it's plugged into the interface, it's plugged into the BIM workflow, and all of this happens in real time. So with that, let's take a look at Enscape in action, and I'd like to turn the presentation over to David. Sure, thanks, Dan. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my uh, screen so y'all can see my, uh, my Revit model open here. Uh, Danielle, I have to say I'm, I'm a little jealous of uh, you were showing off Enscape on the two monitors, but uh, for the purpose of this presentation, obviously I have to stick to the one, <laughs> so it's a little bit, I have a little bit handicapped, so you'll all have to forgive me, um, uh, you know, with, with the screen real estate, not my fault. <laughs> um, so yeah, all you have to do um, to utilize Enscape, uh, well, first of all, I should say it is a plugin for Revit, it currently lives in the, uh, you know, the toolbar up at the top under its own tab, Enscape tab. So if you click over to Enscape, um, you're going to need a 3D geometry, of course, to, uh, uh, you know, to utilize Enscape, which, you know, makes sense. Um, 
And what it's going to do is it's going to take all of the 3D geometry in your model and it's going to render it uh, in real time in uh, the Enscape window. And to get started, you, all you have to do is hit this uh, the play button up at the top left. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to export the model materials, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, everything that uh, is inside this viewport, you're going to see inside my Revit uh, screen. So let me, or uh, Enscape screen. So let me pull this over while it loads. And it is going to drop you right where you were um, in your Revit model. So whatever your view was in Revit uh, will be the corresponding view that you get in the Enscape window. And it should be any, any second now. So as it's loading, what's actually coming in will be coming in is geometry. Um, we'll come in to the Enscape window. Um, any lights that you've set up, um, including any IES data, and then any in textures and materials that you've applied into the Revit model will all instantly appear in, in the Enscape window. And here you see it. So uh, navigation is um, pretty, if, if you're if you've ever played a game on your computer, you you'll feel right at home. Um, you're going to use the W, A, S, and D keys to uh, to move, uh, albeit in this case slowly, but you can go a little faster too. All right, so you can click in the mouse and rotate it like your um, almost like your head, uh, and you can right click to orbit around the uh, position of your your mouse cursor. So you pretty easy to navigate. Um, you know, I feel like if if you've been using computers for a while, you should be pretty at home in this sort of um, environment. You can also double click to immediately go to uh, any position, right? And you can also switch yourself uh, from walk mode to fly mode. So right now I'm in fly mode, so I can go up here, but if I wanted to go back down to earth, um, like, a, like a human, I could just hit the space bar and it'll drop me down to around uh, eye level. So that's useful for uh, when you want to get, you know, the actual view of, of uh, you know, maybe the average person um, walking through the space um, instead of, you know, flying off into, into the sky. So you can also change the, uh, the time of day in your Revit model. Uh, so you can use the U key, U or the I key, if you see on the bottom right, hand corner changes the, the time of the day, um, which of course affects the sun position. So you can do a full, uh, you know, light evaluation study with um, you know, different times of day uh, without having to uh, modify anything in the Revit model. So it all is baked into the Enscape model. And uh, scrolling down on this help menu, you can see that um, all the shortcuts are right here. And in addition to the time of day, you can also set uh, things like the solar angle, the solar rotation, um, as well as resetting the sun to back to where it was when it started um, in case you, you know, mess it up too much. Um, so that's a pretty, pretty useful feature right there. Um, in addition, if you have your site location in Revit set, Enscape will uh, we'll read that site location and we'll be able to, um, you know, make make accurate sun positions based on the uh, the GPS coordinates of the uh, the site that you uh, that you've set. So uh, it's pretty smart in that sense. But of course, you can override it if you wanted to um, change that. You can as well. Uh, going up to my uh, toolbar tab up at the top, from left to right, um, you've got collaborative annotation which is a useful tool for um, noting issues, uh, in particular uh, objects or locations in the Revit model that you can use to share with other members of your team in Enscape. Um, not in a, in a live environment just yet, but uh, you know, you'd know you be able to send it to them and they can uh, review that as well in the Enscape model. You also have BIM mode, uh, which will give you information on any elements that you select. So if I select this 
Uh, I selected this wall, as you can see, and you can see that there, uh, the BIM data is pulled up on the left uh, panel. So just a useful tool to, you know, if you need some information um, or if you wanted to get uh, uh, some data on whatever that object object is. In addition, Enscape will pull in all of the uh, views that you've set in, in Revit. So if you look over here on the left, I have some 3D views that were set in, in Revit. Those will pull over into Enscape. So I can go right to my view over here. This will just load into the library, coffee bar. So Enscape is really great at um, getting all of the data that you've spent all the time to put into your Revit model um, and then puts it to good use uh, additionally in, in the rendering. All right, so you can also create views directly from within Enscape. So if I were to make a new view, I can do that here, create the view. And there we have it. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it uh, carries over back to Revit. Dan, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, or, or no, it does. I apologize. Yeah, there it is, right? There's yes. the view I just made. Yeah, <laughs> answered my own question. And then it took a new in 3.3 .3 is the fact that we can now sync the camera views so as you're navigating if you have dual monitors um as you're navigating in revit um you're zooming and 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 uh kind of flying over in revit then those will also um zoom and 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 fly over in and in, in enscape so those views can be synced which is a nice feature great yeah so another great new feature from uh, the newest version of enscape that uh, I guess it just took a second to populate over there in, in Revit and I didn't see it. That's my excuse. Uh, <laughs> but no, that's great. That's uh, that's awesome because you uh, before it had only been um, you have to set the views in Revit and then Enscape would pick that pick up on that. Um, now that there's a lot more, um, you know, cross communication between Revit and Enscape. And really, you know, that's kind of the, the, the beauty of Enscape, um, really leaning into the features of, uh, you know, real time information updating in real time. Uh, so in addition to uh, the views, you'll also get the ass access to the asset library. This comes with um, any purchase of Enscape. Um, so anyone has access, anyone with Enscape can access um, any of these assets. Now, in prior versions, you could only access the uh, asset library from within Revit to place to place assets, right? So I would push this button and I would have um, this window pop up with all of the different assets you can um, you can choose from. Uh, additionally, I just want to I want to mention that you see this tab for custom assets. So you can certainly um, add your own uh, custom uh, set of assets if you know your your firm has has any of those, you can certainly do that. Um, and then you'll have those added to the library to your own library as well. They won't be added to Enscape's library but just wanted to note that so i would normally take a uh, let's take a person let's try to get this guy sitting in the chair i don't know how successful i'll be um but really what i want to show you is that uh, it's going to update this the model in real time so i'm going to put this guy all right checking out floating above the chair wherever he is okay and there he is, yeah, kind of floating near the chair. Hard to tell, inconclusive. But yeah, so anything that you add in um, in Revit, um, adding any assets, moving things around um, will be updated in real time. So let's see if I can try to get uh, get him in a, in a better place. Move him over here. There he is. There we go. That looks a little better, except he's clipping through the table. But you know what? We'll just, you know, I don't want to be rude and saying something. Um, now, another new feature for the asset library 
uh, is the ability to place multiple assets uh, at once. So over here on this left-hand side, I see uh, there's single asset placement, but there's also then multi-asset placement. So if I select this, I can select the assets I want to place. Uh, you know what? I don't see any trash cans uh, on the street here. So I feel like in order to prevent littering, we should we should put some some trash cans. So I just went to my uh, street props category, and I'm going to look for yeah, this looks like a good like New York City trash can. So I can select that one, um, but you can also select you know different assets as well. So let's select uh, this guy and this guy. So a bunch of different garbage garbage cans, uh, and then you're going to want to select where you want to place them. So bucket selection will let you pick um, diff a face of an element um, to place the assets on. Currently, uh, I believe you can only select one at a time, uh, or you can create your own uh, kind of circular or rectangular uh, selection. So let me. So yeah, if I, I can make a rectangular box, and that will tell Enscape where to put the assets. Let's stick with. Uh, a, like a let's just clear that let's, let's put the trash cans on this sidewalk let's select them and then i can choose the uh the density and if i'm not happy with uh where my trash cans get placed i can just click regenerate Oh, you know what? It looks yeah, it looks like they're getting placed all through there. So let's select, just select uh, this guy. There we go. So now you can see <laughs> it's a lot of trash cans. So if I'm not happy with that, I can reduce the density until I'm pleased with where it is. If I'm not pleased with the placement, I can regenerate to get a new random distribution. And in addition, you can choose a non-random distribution. So you can choose from jitter or from a uniform, which would just be, you know, kind of a e e spaced equidistant um, um, throughout the uh, throughout the space. But uh, usually, ra random is is best. This is good for vegetation as well um, because you can select uh, several different kinds of uh, plants and trees and place those all throughout the, uh, um, you know, whatever the surface that you want to, you know, put more assets on. So it's also also good for um, you know, adding adding people to the scene, um, just kind of filling things out and making it look um, like a real like a real space. Um, so this you get with with Enscape. And in addition to the assets, uh, which you know help kind of make make a scene more realistic, um, you also have the ability to add a site add site context now. So if I click on this site context button. Uh, it's going to prompt me to add a site context. And if you have um, a location set in uh, in Revit, it's going to going to pull that. So right now we're set in uh, in Boston. So we'll go ahead and pull in this site context data. And there we go. Just got to reload. There we go. So now you can see the surrounding Boston, Boston skyline. Um, and what's really great is if you have a powerful enough um, graphics card, you will uh, be able to get this read these real time uh, ray tracing. Uh, so if you have the, um, you know, the build the site buildings nearby and, you know, you want to see how the light will hit uh, off of the buildings at different, you know, different times of day or night. Obviously, not night. Let's just let's go back to. There we go. So you can see how the shadows in the buildings will affect, you know, the light that your model gets. So if I, for example, if I hide this, you can see the light change immediately, right? So totally different um, lighting situation. Uh, with and without the site context. So yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty cool. And on the left hand side, you can also uh, choose 
to show hide or show uh, certain aspects of the site model. So it gives you a lot of granular control over um, the visibility of these different elements as well. So if I click on this and I uh, click on edit site context, this gives me the option to move my uh, my model around. Uh, don't don't mind the uh, the weird clipping. So let me uh, if I click on the translate button. Let's you know, scroll way out. Click on this guy. Should be able to. Move it. Okay. Well, you can also tra translate it with the uh, the numbers on the side. So we've just moved it down. Yeah, I'm not sure why I can't uh, can't click and grab it, uh, but usually usually I can. So I don't know what's what's up with that. So it's not letting me select it for some reason. Um, Dan, if you see what I'm doing wrong, let me know. But uh, yeah. But, uh, but so that, yeah, well, just I was just going to mention so that translation of uh, you know, moving the site up and down will allow you to see open street map data. That's where this data is coming from. It's open source. So it allows you to easily add a site context. This is great for, you know, pre-construction um, and then to, just to give your sites a little more realism. And then what David was showing was just this ability to move the site up and down. So that um, allows you to maybe see things, um, site details in open street maps like roads. Um, so if you could push the site down a little bit, then the, that data then will show through. So there it's, it is. it's a really nice editable, edit, editability feature, yeah. Here That's it good, is. That's good, David. Perfect. Yeah, now, now I can move it around. You know what, I think my problem was I was trying to move the, the model, but mm -hmm. you're, actually moving, you're actually moving the site um, when you're doing edit site context. So. That's my Correct. my my bad. So now I can place my building properly, rotate. Oh, rotate over here. Yeah. So yeah, it really gives you a lot of control over um, you know how your building is going to be placed. I'm just going to leave everything back where it was, uh, so I don't mess anything up. And now my site context is part of the model. So you also have the ability to uh, create videos right from within Enscape. Um, very easy to do. Uh, it's, it's just a you know keyframe process of uh, moving where you want to, adding the keyframe. So for example, um, you know let's start at, uh, at an exterior view. We'll have one keyframe here. And then we'll go to up here and add another keyframe. And then let's go over here for another one. Okay. And now, and you can change the uh, the spacing of these keyframes. Uh, and the time it takes to uh, to move through one. Uh, now that I see this video is a minute and 30 seconds long, I can go over here and I can change duration. So I can make this a little faster. Let's, let's make this, uh, actually, let's just get rid of this. There we go. And from here, you can either um, export this as a video, uh, or you know, use it to um, you know evaluate different. Uh, so what you can do is you can actually save this video position, and you can uh, change different elements of the of the model. For example, if I wanted it at a different time of day, you can do that and make a new video. So now you have nighttime. Nighttime video. So all of this stuff uh, lives within Enscape um, and piggybacks off of the data in your Revit model. Um, updating materials in Revit will update the 
uh, materials in in Enscape in real time as well. So you can go into let's uh, let's see, we go to my Revit model. Oh, let's go exterior. And if I wanted to change, let's say my floor, my road. So I can change that to uh, let's see, let's go into my asset library. So you know, I don't know if I have any, but let's see, let's just make it make it concrete. Or I can pull out my asset browser and pick from there as well. So let's just let's make it a let's give it a wood wooden street. Yeah. Nope, I actually have to. Yeah, so I'll just change the uh, change some of the features on this. So if I make this a uh, different color, green road, you'll see this reflected in Enscape. Whoop. There we go. So now I have a nice green tinted road. Um, but yeah, any modifications that you make in Enscape will, or uh, in Revit will translate right into Enscape. So uh, you can you'll be able to see in real time, you know, what any of those uh, modifications that you make. So if client wants to see a different material, a different flooring, you can show them immediately. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to show you uh, is the VR capability of. Enscape. So I actually have a, a little video prepared that I that I made of myself in uh, in VR. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I will I will play that and talk over it. Um, the reason I'm not doing it live is uh, well, there are many reasons, um, but mostly I wasn't sure how uh, plausible it would be to um, present and you know broadcast my. Uh, my VR experience in real time. So I just went ahead and recorded it. Uh, so here I am uh, fumbling around in the virtual <laughs> the virtual world. Um, I'm using a uh, Meta Quest 2, um, but of course you can use um, you know, other compatible, uh, compatible headsets. Um, so you can see I'm, I'm just jumped in. My hands have a laser pointer attached uh, to it to, uh, so I can select things and, and point at things. Um, you can look down at your hands to get the uh, different menu options, um, which will let you make some adjustments to, uh, again, like the time of day, move around, things like that. Um, so you can move just the same that you would in, um, you know, normally in Enscape, um, except you use the joysticks uh, to kind of move around. Um, and you can also kind of teleport to, uh, to different spots as well. So if you click on the camera, uh, you can take pictures um, and you can also change from uh, seated to room scale mode if you wanted to walk around uh, and from walk mode to fly mode. Uh, so that has your navigation options. Um, additionally, you can go to all of the saved views. If, you, if I select the, uh, the little star, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get to there in a, in a second. Just skip forward a little bit. Yeah, so you can go right to the different views that you've already set uh, in your model. So that's really useful for um, you know setting it up, and then you can check out the different views in Enscape. And like I said before, you can choose that camera option, so that'll let you um, basically take a, a picture of that uh you know your view in enscape there um so pretty pretty useful uh to kind of like set up uh different renders because you can also use that um 
as like a like a camera to set up different um, different scenes to render uh, after um, you know you're you're out of the VR VR mode, right? Because uh, you know the resolution in VR is going is going to be a little bit lower than it is normally. Um, so you want to res render at the highest resolution possible to get a good image. So it just saves the uh, the position uh, of the view and then it renders it after you get out of the VR. And you get a nice little little preview of, of the view over there. So you can kind of move around almost like a, almost like some kind of photographer, <laughs> take your picture um, and then you'll get the rendered image uh, image output afterwards. All right, so the rest of it is just me, uh, me kind of fumbling around with that. Um, Again, you can change the time of day in VR as well. Uh, so another, another useful tool of uh, being able to see the different light uh, situations. And that should just about do it, which will leaves us time for uh, any questions. Thanks, David. Of course. That's great. Thanks, David. I know there were some questions that um, Dave, uh, Joseph, you were answering um, as well. And in addition to that, we we're sharing some resources with you on the chat box. Um, I just wanted to like maybe point that out. So there were some questions on where do you, um, how do you get started, right? There's a great article that we shared with you in the chat box. Um, what are the best VR headsets? So check out that article as well that we, um, that Enscape had put together for a listing of the uh, recommendations, um, as well as the system requirements. Some people were asking, well, what, um, what is the best performance for Enscape? Here are some of the recommendations. And in fact, a quick tip is that David just uh, upgraded his system right before this presentation. I, I did literally two, like a few days ago. Um, so actually, uh, I'll speak to, on that a little bit. Um, it is uh, graphics cards prices are are finally starting to get back to normal a normal spot. So if any anyone kind of like me that was kind of holding off on um, making that kind of purchase because it was like getting ridiculous, um, it's much more reasonable now. Like basically at MSRP's. Um, so I just got a a thirty seventy Ti um, in here, which um, is which is pretty solid. Uh, you know for what for what Enscape. Um, requires uh i can run vr uh great and actually you know the video that you saw was on my old um old gpu so uh, it'll look even better now but um but yeah so you'll want to you know like a 2060 or 3060 at, at minimum um but uh, you know the better you can get uh, the better your performance will be in enscape so um you can see the full system requirements and recommendations uh for vr on the their website um, if you just go to the knowledge base, it should have um, all that information for you. And uh, I do see a question um, for the side command panels on the left and right of Enscape. Are they accessible when I'm using the VR headset? Um, for example, we may want to adjust lighting on the fly without the need to take the headset away. Also, while in VR, we may want to create issue. Um, so currently, not not yet. Um, like a, uh, you can change the time of day when you're in VR, but as far as other um, lighting options, uh, that that's pretty much it. And really, uh, what I showed you is is kind of what uh, what you can do for now. Um, you know, I'm I'm sure that uh, Daniel can speak more on this, uh, but but I, I don't know what their plans are. But I but he did mention a dedicated VR team, so I have to imagine that more features are uh, coming down the pipeline. Yeah, I mean, we're really putting an emphasis on VR, particularly in the upcoming versions, and um, it's becoming a more and more important part of the workflow. In terms of issue management in VR, um, you know, you can take a snapshot. So if you see an air or, or air condition, you can take a snapshot of it, and then we can render that out and, and use that for part of our issue management workflow. Um, but multi-user collaboration and, and kind of issue management and, and markups, th those are all excellent ideas, both in just a real-time rendering mode and also in VR mode. Hey, David, it's the other David, since I have the uh, ability to uh, chime in, um, figure I would, I, I realize I cannot type in the uh, question and answer panel, because I guess I'm a panelist, so it doesn't let me. Um, I wonder if you could spend a little bit of time showing us, uh, while we're talking about issues, you know, what, what is that, when you create an issue, you know, what, what, 
how do you review issues? How do you collaborate, share issues? Is there some sort of a dashboard? Is it, what, what's the interface for issues look like? And for Daniel, this could also be a, a sort of a future thing question, but is yes. there any sort of integration with, uh, you know, the Procores, Revistos, Bimfis yes. and of the world? Yeah, so, so right now, the, when you um, create an issue in Enscape, um, it's in, it actually is in Enscape and it's accessible through the Enscape interface. Um, so if you want to review the issues that you're capturing in real time, um, Enscape is the collaboration tool that you would use. But as I think you're pointing out, David, which is, which is kind of the next step in evolution in all of this is then be able to take these issues and really make them more compatible with the larger ecosystem. So the first is BIM 360, so that's what we're looking to support next. And then, of course, I think beyond BIM 360, there's a number of ways that we can do this. Um, we're also compatible with BIM Track, so if anyone's using BIM Track out there, that's another way that we can support this kind of issue management process. Um, and then, if you have your own favorite tool that you would like us to be compatible with, please put it in the chat, and I could get that into the development team wish list. Fantastic. Um, yes, yeah, so you saw me kind of with the uh, issue panel open so opening it here i can create an issue yeah it'll this basically is... yeah sorry go ahead no no please david continue yeah so it just creates um a thumbnail based on you know the current uh view that you're in when you push that um of course you can change the issue uh be a little bit more specific so maybe i select this uh this panel and i'll say uh check this panel Describe it. Um, check. I don't know if there was a real issue. Then you know, obviously, that's what I would, I'd put something there. Um, but then you could also change the state mm -hmm. of the issue, as well as add um, additional comments. Um, you know, for other users to uh, to see. Um, so yeah, right now that's that's kind of where the issue um, issue feature each feature is. Uh, but I think that more uh, collaboration is coming down the pipeline. And then sorry, they do do they need the full license of Enscape in order to be able to host down those issues? Uh, yes. That's what I thought. Okay. Yes. And then just a quick question. I know I posted the VR um, headset requirements or recommendations, but do you do any of you want to like touch base on what you recommend, what work doesn't work or in what situations, please? Uh, well, I would not recommend the uh, something like the 1060, which is what I had uh, previously, <laughs> um, which, you know, I'm being a little bit glib, but because um, it, it, it did work, uh, but uh, really, I wasn't able to make use of a lot of the advanced features in Enscape, um, which takes advantage of uh, real time ray tracing um, for the lighting features, as well as um, DLSS, uh, which is a uh, uh, there's something, something super sampling, um, digital learning, distrib distributed learning, uh, super sampling. I don't know. Someone correct me on that. I think I'm probably wrong, but uh, that's um, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Which gives you a very, uh, like a higher resolution um, image if, you know, out of your, your uh, the current viewport. Um, so You're close. Yeah. Uh, deep learning, super sampling. Yep. Learning super sampling. Okay. I, I yeah. thought that was, it was too obvious. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I would, I'd say that, uh, as far as the GPU is concerned, uh, anything in the, uh, uh, GeForce RTX series is good. Um, obviously the higher, the number, the better, but, uh, you know, obviously higher numbers come with higher other numbers, which would be the price, um, of those cards. So I think you find out, I, I feel like I found a happy medium between, uh, price and performance on the 3070, but, um, Kind of up to you. I would not actually recommend the Quadro uh, cards unless it's a Quadro RTX card, um, since they don't really have the um, the, the feature sets that uh, Enscape utilizes for a lot of their um, a lot of the processes. Um, so yeah, well, uh, you know, if you're looking at like a CAD workstation, a lot of them will come by default with like a Quadro uh quadro card um you may want to look for one with um you know either a quadro rtx card or a uh a, you know go for the geforce if that makes makes sense 
and just to double check the uh, VR headset you used during the demo, was that an uh, Oculus Rift? Uh, it was a MetaQuest 2. Okay. Um, yeah, but it we will work with a um a Rift or um uh, what's the other one? The uh the HTC Vive it will work with um all the versions I believe. Um it and utilizes the Odyssey as well, I believe is one of the list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe as long as it can interface with Steam VR, um it will be able to uh get an image from from Enscape. Fantastic. And Kant wants to find out, can we assign, uh, sorry, did you answer this already, or map Enscape command to VR controller and use buttons? Uh, yeah, so currently I uh, can't do that, but um, oh. possibly in the future when, when there are more features, yeah. Correct. Okay, okay. maybe something else for um, mm -hmm. the product development team, okay. Um, I'm sure they have a long list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but please, like, you know, if you guys have ideas, put them in the chat so I can take them back. Fantastic. And then also there's a follow-up question referring to the answer um, David mentioned. The assets are not always hosted. In fact, it's hardly hosted. Like floor, road, ramp, also many of them are on offset from level. Do you know that? Yeah, I think this was related to uh, a question that I had answered previously there. Uh, and maybe, uh, maybe one of you would be able to clarify a little better. When you place assets into the Enscape model, how are they hosted within the Revit model? Is that uh, hosted question. by face or are they uh, floating in the, the Revit uh, 3D environment? No, you should be placing them on the face of the Revit object. So by default, they should they should be affixed or default to the to the face plane, the plane of the face. Does that answer okay. the question? I think uh, I think part of it. Um, I think the, the main concern is if anything changes with that face. So if it's uh, originally hosted on a uh, on a floor, and if that floor changes position, will those assets move along with that floor? I, I believe they are they are associated with that floor, and so then they will move with the floor. Okay, great. Thank you. And I don't know if Sophia is still around. We have a question about like, what is the cost of Enscape? Do you want to answer that, Sophia? Or do you want to refer them to send you an email? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, so there's two options. One is the floating license, which is $898. That's a yearly subscription. And then the sellable license is $514. Great. And for an annual subscription. Do you want to elaborate the type of different licenses there are? as well and yeah sure so the floating license allows you to it's can be shared with multiple machines the standalone license is completely tied to one workstation uh so those are the two different options depending on your workflow uh you know feel free to reach out to me i'll be happy to help you you know choose the best option for you sounds great and then brandon there's a question about training do you mind posting on the chat box where they can go if they wanted a deeper dive of this yeah yeah, yeah absolutely Perfect, thank so, you. Brian, with a uh, feature request um, I could use is uh, exporting EXE standalone from Enscape uh, walkthrough with the ability to change time of day effect in the video stream. Uh, I, I agree, that'd be an awesome feature. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Put it on the list. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, that's a good one. And then uh, another question on standalone.exe, do we have access to issue function? I believe you do. Um, I'm not 100% sure, actually, uh, Daniel, if you know. Yeah, I don't know, actually, the question, the answer to that question. I have to investigate it. It's a good one. Can't, we'd have to get back to you then. Uh, if you All can right. send an email to uh, enscape at microsoftresources.com, we'll follow up with Dan and his team. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a good question. Okay. Um, How do you host a VR session with a client? To have Anybody? them come over, give them a headset. That's what we're finding more and more. Um, we just did a, a, a series of deep dive interviews with a number of interior design offices. And um, what we're finding is, is that this is the workflow. They're actually working um, with the client. They invite the client in and um, they actually have a VR session and they're making changes on the fly. And then the client is um, in VR 
really understanding, I think, more completely, particularly from a drawing, um, you know, what the design intent is, how things will look, making sure that the actual deliveries will match the end user's expectations. And it's really been, a, a, I think, a very nice workflow for the interior designers. And um, so what we're seeing is that those changes, because it's real time, um, those changes that are being made in Revit are being reflected in the VR model, and then the client can work with the designer to confirm that those design decisions are correct. So, it's, yeah. It's, so, yeah. So I think the dream is that um, we're all, you know, in the metaverse in our headsets, uh, interacting <laughs> in this, in the building. Um, but I don't know if we're there yet. Um, I think what I what I found is that a lot of times um, you have to get over that hurdle of you put the headset on a person. And now they have to, you know, listen, if they're not a gamer or something like that, then they have to get used to a whole new way of interacting with, um, you know, their their computer. So, you know, what you might think would take like 20 minutes, you end up spending an hour um, teaching someone how to kind of navigate around the space and, and use use it. Um, I feel like, you know, when we get to a place in maybe a, a year or two, when it becomes a little bit more prevalent, um, you know, that you know, we can all jump into the model together that we all even have VR headsets. Um, I think that'll be, that'll be much more common. Um, but for, for right now, I've seen mostly it's uh, like um, being in the same space, uh, putting the headset on a person and then interacting with them um, yeah. with that. And I just remember like from an, an event that we did before when we we're doing VR and what they've done for different iterations and design is that they use QR codes already, right? You know, um, mm -hmm. design option A to design option Z. <laughs> um, and then they use that in order to, for the client to be shared. So um, this is actually maybe more for Dan. How can Enscape render V-Ray material? Or maybe it is. Uh, yeah, no, that's a, um, that's a very good question. So that's not possible today. But of course, with the interaction, you know, this merger of chaos and V-Ray, of chaos and Enscape, excuse me, um, that's what we're working on. Um, so we're working on the integration of the Enscape and the V-Ray workflow. So the idea is that we'll be able to take Enscape scenes and move them forward very easily into V-Ray. Um, and then conversely, we'll be able to use V-Ray materials inside of Enscape. Um, then on top of that, there's a whole asset strategy that we're discussing um, how we can share assets together um, and, and take advantage of, of, of Cosmos, which is their kind of asset platform. Yes. And in fact, there are um, upcoming changes actually to V-Ray. So uh, stay tuned to those during, you know, the next few weeks. Uh, coincidentally, Sophia is actually the uh, account executive for uh, V-Ray and Chaos Group products. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach her either at V-Ray at microshowresources.com or Enscape at microshowresources.com and it will go to her. Um, she can give you more insights or maybe a sneak preview of what's what's next to come, especially if yeah. you have five or more licenses. Yeah. So again, 3D, uh, um, ver the new version is coming out soon. <laughs> okay, that's all I, I'm allowed to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then some people were asking, how do you use VR for construction? And David, you asked me this, especially for selling, right? Um, we actually had a webinar a few weeks ago that somebody, uh, Brian from Consigli and Suffolk Construction in Boston did for us. And it was wonderful because he was able to share their, their actual projects because those are hard to find and hard to um, find somebody that can actually talk about them. So he was able to share it with us and I'm actually sharing it with you here. We did record it. We have it, the link and it's in our chat box. So feel free to go and review it. Um, there are some, any other insights on this particular video recording for da the, David Spurgle, for David uh, Diarza to um, view, right? It's one of our best webinars. Yeah, I, think I, I actually, I'm, yeah, I'll go check that out. We've, I think I mentioned at the beginning, uh, the project that I'm on in particular, we're not using Enscape like ourselves, you know, but, but our architect is using Enscape in the design process and they're sharing those executables. And uh, I'm actually going to disagree a little bit with with David on the on the adoption. I've I've seen um, a superintendent, not very sophisticated computer user, jump in the headset and immediately understand the space and sort of take to it. I will agree it, it was a little bit of a handheld. It wasn't just them on on their own, but they needed very little coaching to sort of start navigating around. And one of the things that 
that we used it for. I mean, obviously we're not necessarily interested in like lighting and sun studies and materiality and things like that, but that sort of understanding of complex space and envisioning the means and methods they're going to take to, to create it. You know, we were in particular talking about scaffolding, you know, how we, high bay areas, like how are we going to get man lifts in here and scaffolding and how do we get this equipment in and out of here? Oh, and that's what the architect really intends for this to look like. It, it's, it's immediate on, on a drawing, even if you've been reading architectural drawings for 30 years, like I have, you, you still you have to jump through a lot of hoops and follow a lot of links and go down this scavenger hunt through the details to figure out what something's like. If it's modeled correctly. You look at it, especially in VR, not only you see it, but you understand it very, very quickly. Yeah. So that's for me, a, a, a huge plus of this real time rendering in VR capability. Agreed. One of the best use cases I've, I've seen is, um, you know, bu uh, building a medical facility, um, when it was given to, you know, some nurse, nurse technicians, like, okay, navigate around this, uh, exam space um, and then immediately you get feedback like oh this cabinet shouldn't be here uh, the sink is in a weird place because I have to walk over here to do that um, and yeah you're right it does I think it you know it some of it is not intuitive but I think once you do get in there it's immediately um, obvious you know how uh, useful it is yeah amazing tool well we're we're right at uh, one o'clock pacific over here so if uh, if you want I can wrap it up or um, yes. if you, anybody else has anything else to uh I'm good. Um, Thank right, you so much, David. Yeah. Yeah, you bet. There was, um, let's see, I'll share my screen over here, go back to my, uh, my slides. So yeah, again, thank you so much. Uh, uh, to Microsoft Resources, uh, you guys have been, um, you know, good friends of CRUG for a few years now, always come with really good presentations and a, and a team, um, you know, devoted to putting together a really good presentation, really answering a lot of questions, being a really great resource to CRUG. So we really appreciate it. And we, we always welcome you. Uh, we just wish that you were in Seattle a little bit more. <laughs> that rather You're than here. The other side. I wish so too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, again, thank you very much. And thank you to everybody for, for joining us. And uh, just to wrap it up, um, you know, uh, next meeting, as, as you all know, as I mentioned last month, if you joined us in person this month, it's been a little bit, or this year has been a little bit weird with the transition back uh, from, from COVID. And uh, um, we don't currently have a July presentation lined up. That could change because we're trying to do some sort of self uh, self presentations for, for with the CRUG group, but July is always you know people on vacation, all that stuff. So we might not do it. But as it stands right now, August seventeenth would be our next uh, meeting, and that would actually be in person uh, at the uh, Seattle Public Library. So if you're in Seattle, if you can join us, uh, we'd love to have you. Love to see you and uh, reconnect again after so long uh, behind our cameras and our Zoom. So uh, that's all from me. Thank you very much to top, uh, to, uh, Microsoft solutions again. And, uh, thank you very much to all of you for watching and, uh, we'll see you on the next one.